Good day, fellow investors. A friend contacted me today saying how next week he's getting 840,000 euros from his bank at a 0.6% interest rate fixed for 30 years and how he's going to invest in the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF. This is really insane, but it really explains the market. It explains the strategy many investors across the globe have. It explains or doesn't the sanity of what's going on. And it tells us that at some point in time, this will likely end. Let me give you just a short summary of the story and then we'll discuss the repercussions of it. The investment, the high dividend yield ETF from Vanguard, whether I agree, you'll be surprised or not with what my friend is doing. If you like this, please click that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you very much and let's start. So the situation, as I said, 840,000 euros loan from an Italian bank. This is about a million dollars fixed for 30 years. Really, really great terms. Of course, he has a few millions in assets, mostly real estate, dozens of years of history, great credit rating, great company, and therefore he can get those loans. But those loans are in Italy. Italy is the second most indebted country in Europe. So it's really crazy that that exists, but that is the world we are living in. And that also explains the economy, not just the market, but also the economies and how things are structured and how does the financial world we live in work. All to be explained pretty soon. So let's discuss this high dividend yield investment and why it is attractive and this also explains why stocks just keep going up, up and up. If we look at the performance of this fund ETF, did nothing special over the last five years, but it's still up 32% in US dollars plus the dividends that are around now 3.5%. Nothing bad, nothing wrong. My friend is investing in this to get more regional exposure. He's 100% invested in Italy. He will now diversify by, of course, market capitalization, North America, Europe. And apart from the financial overweight a little bit, the rest is well diversified across various sectors. If we look at the holdings, 1,400 91 holdings, all good companies, J&J, Procter & Gamble, Nestle, JP Morgan, Verizon, Samsung, Roche, Pfizer, at and So really good companies. So you can't go really wrong, but you have to see, okay, what is my investment goal and compare it to the loan. If he can get 3.5%, compare it to the 0.6% interest that he has to pay, it's a no-brain investment. If we look at the distributions, 1.6 per year, depending on the currency and how you change that, it's approximately 3.38, 3.5% yield on the investment. And now actually my friend asked me, Sven, should he invest the complete sum next week or should it do it over the next few months, next few quarters? To answer that question, I made a video dollar cost averaging versus lump sum investment. And if you're interested, if you're in such a situation that you have a million sitting on the side, you might want to check that video discussing what are the probabilities. 70% lump sum is better, 30% dollar cost averaging is better if you have money now. But see how it fits and see the technicalities there. So loan amount, 30 years, 0.6 interest rate, the interest paid is really ridiculous. And this also explains a lot about the economy. We'll show it in a second. So the dividend yield is 3.5%, 2,400 per month. Should cover these payments, especially the dividends given the companies continue to grow over time. So in 30 years, if the stock market doubles, my friend will make two millions for free from his bank. And now, how does this explain the market and especially the economy? High debt in Italy and the ECB, Fed, Bank of Japan, Bank of China, they have to print money into the system to keep it 
alive. If not, the world we are living in would not function. So let me just give you an example. If I Google Firenze, Florence in Italy, we take this little guy and we go somewhere randomly. We see, okay, a business, we see buildings, we see construction sites, loans to what's this, a new mall or something, probably apartments, and people need to buy these apartments, people need to pay, people need to buy these things. Without money, without credit, the whole economy, oh, I can buy everything here, the whole economy would stop. And this is not just this. If we go to Daimler, if we look at the bonds overview, just look at the coupons on those bonds and then the bid prices are higher so the real yield is even lower. So 1.37, 2%, 0.625%. If we look at the latest bond, 0.7%. That's insane, but without free money from the ECB, companies like Daimler would have huge problems just existing. I wouldn't be able to buy a car from Daimler with zero interest rates, which was the offer I was getting when I was living in the Netherlands. Zero. Free money. You can buy a, a car for free money because the ECB is giving that for you, because without that, it would be all over. Every company would be bankrupt. That's the world we are living in. And this situation explains the economy, but also the market. So the market is going up, up, up and up because of the free money. If you put that into a strategy perspective, we are talking about moral hazard because there are a lot of players that see, okay, I can take free money. My friend has great credit rating, great assets, but there are many spec companies and everything that don't have those where they see, okay, if I lose, I lose somebody else's money, not mine. If I win, I make it big. Many companies going public, IPOs, uh, getting financing from pension funds, from everything, no matter the risk, that's the market we are living. And then if you look at the game, the name of the game, it's a spread game. If you can borrow or get money for free by issuing equity in some company or something like that, then there is no risk for you. You borrow or you get money, you invest it somewhere else with hopefully higher yield or where you can just play the game, push financial assets higher, higher and higher, sell at the right time and make the difference. Because if we just look at the S&P 500 dividend yield, it's still 1.8%. If you compare that to interest rates of 0, 1%, then stocks are still attractive. Plus, when you look at the growth of Amazon or all those companies that make the S&P 500, then stocks are an incredible bargain and therefore this game still works and stocks keep going up because without the free money that might not go to the person most needing it that lives on minimum wage or something like that but they think that by giving it to all companies by selling more mercedes no matter the price no matter the cost no matter the long term that they do good whether that is rational or not it's no risk for those taking the money loan or something like that. So that's rational. Over the long term, you can't ask rationality from politicians. So they think short term, sprint, print, borrow, 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 as long as a crash or a big crisis doesn't happen while they're on the helm. They will be gone in four years, taken their money, made their business connections, made money for others, and then they go somewhere else. This will unfortunately end. I wish I knew when, but it's always the same story. 1990s issuing equity for promises, 2000s agglomerating money into credit default swaps or whatever was the case then. Now we have the Fed backing it all up, which is the lender of last resort. But at some point, people will say, okay, this money is worthless. There is so much of it. And I can give you examples. When I lived twice in my history with money that becomes really, really worthless, 
And I think that will be the end also of this money printing craziness leverage as much as we can. But when it will end, I don't know. Then when it comes to investing, those who took a loan and invested in real assets and then money went to zero, no value, those did well. Those ended up with no loans and real assets. So the rich will get richer, the poorer will stay poor. That's the name of the game. You see how you play it so that you don't end up with a lot of free money. I was a kid when I collected this, but you end up with real assets. Thanks for watching. Tomorrow, IBM dividend stock that I analyzed, among other stocks that I analyzed. I'll see you tomorrow.